Hello, hello, hello. Marcia Ben from Think Premium JA. And today we are actually going to be highlighting why you need to be a butterfly and stop acting like a caterpillar. So, fun fact about butterflies, they actually don't hang around with caterpillars for a reason. They're on a different level. Literally, um, caterpillars crawl, butterflies can fly away. That's how they get away from their enemies. Butterflies have legs that allow them to taste and wings that allow them to get wherever they choose. However, all butterflies are once caterpillars. Not all caterpillars become butterflies. And, you know, many caterpillars actually die before they're able to evolve into butterflies. And while caterpillars actually serve their purpose, for example, silkworms are actually caterpillars and there are over 20,000 species <laughs> of butterflies. At the end of the day, in order to evolve, a butterfly had to go through the process of turning into, of turning, moving from a caterpillar to successfully becoming a butterfly without interrupting that process whatsoever. That process was interrupted, the organism died. As um, caterpillars, oh, sorry, as butterflies evolve, their past problems, and their past form is no longer of use to them because they literally go into that cocoon and change and everything. Just like what happens with you, let's say as an entrepreneur going through your wilderness season or as a person going through your own period of evolution, whether it's getting a new job, starting a new family, whatever your situation is. But I can definitely relate to this from an entrepreneurial standpoint or even your new life in Christ. You know, that's, that's an evolution as well in and of itself. <laughs> People sleep on that, but... Once you go through the process of officially starting your walk with Christ, especially when you get to that point where you make a public declaration to living a new life in Christ by being baptized, you evolve. Now, it's hard to evolve and go back to being the same version. It just doesn't make sense. And not only that, the view that a butterfly would have versus a caterpillar is way greater. It's hard to go back once you've seen that be and you know some butterflies have the most intricate patterns on the wings based on the species and um, the species that they're a part of when they evolve from their cocoons right so when they emerge from their cocoons depending on what they would have gone through for their species they're gonna get these really elaborate patterns right now just like what happens to an entrepreneur the ones who are really successful have these really elaborate testimonies they're they, they went through a different breed of challenges than the regular person you know the regular person would have drowned easily in some of the things that some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world emerge from that's okay how many persons could have gone through what Oprah went through and emerged from it alive how many persons could have gone through what td jakes went through could have gone through what Patrick B. David went through, what could have gone through what Brant Cardone went through, Mark Cuban. They they went through their own um they went through their own circumstances. Nobody's circumstances look identical, fine, but they went through their own set of circumstances. And Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen to eighteen states, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all new things, sorry, all things become new, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, I'm going to be very honest. As you're going through this period of evolution, it may not see, seem like things have changed. As a matter of fact, you, at this moment in time, may be in a worse position financially than you ever were in your entire life, and, you know, that's understandable. We change especially when you are now submitting your life your business your whole being to christ you lose a lot of what you had before so the ways in which you used to get money before don't work anymore it's not necessarily that you're a bad salesperson you're a bad entrepreneur you're a bad whatever it's just that your old ways probably won't work for some persons you might find that your marriage may not be working because guess what the marriage that god had for you is not the one that you're living in now so as he's preparing you to walk on the journey with him to get what he has for you, because, you know, God is a God of restoration. 
some things may end. Now, um, what God puts together, man and wife, should not divorce, should not be broken. But many persons get into marriages and God was nowhere in the mix when that happened. So those marriages, when they end, you know, you just have to bring that to God. And let him guide you through because God, trust me, God will remove people from your life that you need. And again, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Now, when you are handling situations, though, you will notice that the way you handle them now are completely different from how you handled it five years ago. I'm not saying it won't hurt. Because guess what? You're human. You have feelings. You have emotions. And you still have memories. And even though you forgive, many times you're still going to remember what happened. It's just that you now have that information stored in your head so that the way you approach the situation or person back then is not how you're going to approach the situation and person now. And just because you're forgiving somebody doesn't mean that you accept the behavior. It doesn't mean that they get away easy. And it doesn't mean that God isn't punishing it. That God will work behind the scenes and deal with them. Trust and believe. I was actually reading First Samuel chapter 5 to 8 last night, right? five to seven last night and what people don't realize is in that book when the philistines had taken away the covenant box from israel um it's when the philistines carried that box to their country as god that's their major city right um a lot of things they reached them the persons there got tumors the citizens there got tumors the temple that they had originally put the covenant box in that they were worshipping their um, false god, I think it was Bacchad or something like that. Oh yeah, the first time the statue fell, they decided to put it back up beside the covenant box. The next day, the statue broke. <laughs> and where one of the arms fell, you know, nobody walked there anymore. But yes, <laughs> so they had to send the covenant box somewhere else. So they sent it to another land that they had captured from the Israelites, which was God. No, they sent it to Ikad first. I should really reach out that. They sent it to Ikad first. Everybody there got two of us as well. So the princes there got together and they sent it to God. And it happened again. The persons there got two of us. Everybody was in panic and shaky and everything. Everybody anxious. More anxious than we were when we got the earthquake <laughs> on the 30th of October here in Jamaica. And they had to, the five princes, for the five cities that were, you know, governed under the Philistines, I had to get together and say, listen, we're sending that box right back where it came from. How are you going to send the box back to the people in place? We'll go down there and tell them, sorry, no, we're going to send the box by itself. We have to put it on two oxen that have not been attached or used for work. Yoked. And we're going to put on five tumors of gold, which were their gold masses. They had two also added um, um five gold replicas of mice. So they had the five two um five golden tumors, the five mice. They put it in a wagon um with the oxen drawing it and they added on the covenant box and they sent it on its way by itself. And they said this if it is God, their God that did all of this, he's gonna lead up. We ain't going. And if the Cattle don't move, then we know that it's just random coincidence. And guess, guess what? The box did ours move. The, the cattle did carry the box all the way down to the root. And you know I can't pronounce these. I don't even know why you look at it. <laughs> you know I can't pronounce these. This. Careers Jarring. Yeah. <laughs> so the cattle carried it down to Careers Jarring. And they did it all unattended. In the meantime, there were some Philistines, you know, following around in the background. Just to give an account that, you know, Ray. Um, but they never said anything to anybody. So that was their silent apology to the Israelites. Israelites got the box. Um, 70 soldiers in their army didn't realize what it was and decided to open the box. And God smite them dead because guess what? You know, back in the day, um, and this is something that the Seventh-day Adventists believe in. There is a sanctuary. So in, he in heaven, there is a sanctuary that's made by God. In on earth, there was a physical sanctuary. 
So initially that would have been built by Moses people and it would have been in force throughout the different um, ages in time up until King Nebuchadnezzar when he destroyed the sanctuary that was there after um, King Solomon, right? That's my understanding of it. Be right. You can always double check with the Bible. By the way, this is a good time to review anything that you learn from me with your Bible. You always double check because guess what? I am just a mere human being. And, you know, by grace alone, the grace of God, I am saved. So I can still get things wrong and I don't want to mislead you. So, you know, always run everything by God, right? Always learn about God for yourself. And, you know, yeah, <laughs> I, think that, I think that's all I can say there. But when the period of restorative judgment started, they stopped really using the physical sanctuary because at that point, um, no, not restorative. Um, let me call it again, investigative judgment. I think that was the name of it. I need to double check. But when that happened, they stopped using physical sanctuary. So then this, at that point in the time of Samuel being there, obviously that would have been before King Nebuchadnezzar's time. So in that time, only high priests were allowed to go into the most holy place and in the most holy place, you'd have had the covenant box. The priest didn't know what it was since that box was taken from the people in the sanctuary. The soldiers looked into it. If you're not anointed by God, you're going to die if you look into that box. But then they did it as they died. But besides that, Israel got their silent apology. And you know what happened for them to get to that point? While that box was taken and being carried all over the world and everything, you know, the Israelites were none the wiser. They didn't know that was, that was what was happening in their mind. Things were the same as before. They didn't, it didn't look any different from when the, um, the Philistines had raided their place in the first place and caused all of these things. And that resulted in the shock of a killing prophet Eli and his sons being killed when um, the army invaded and everything. And his, you know, Everybody would have just acted as things were before. They would have carried on. They would have moved on with their lives. And as you go through your evolutionary process, you're going to find that you're just moving on with life. Things are not going to be perfect. You probably are still going to be in debt if you're struggling financially. You probably are still going to be having relational issues. That probably is still going to happen for many persons. It depends on what your wilderness season is. No two people have the same wilderness season and have it experienced the exact same way. You get me? But my point is that you are not handling things the way you did before. It's because Samuel was now there to guide the Israelites. They were still worshipping. Um, while some of them were still there worshipping their idols, you had persons that Samuel was working with and God loved Samuel. So God favored Samuel. But sadly, they were still worshiping their own false gods, which is, you know, to bring that back home to you, you may not be very strong in your walk with God. So you may have your own version of false gods. You may have that career that you love, that you're grieving. You may have that money that you used to have that you're grieving, the body that you used to have that you're grieving, the relationship that you used to have that you're grieving. Um, and relations don't just, relationships don't just have to be romantic. It can be business relationships. It can be friendships. It can be family. You name it. Everybody's wilderness season is different, but there are similarities. So whatever it is, you may be going through that season and not realizing that you are growing in the process. As a matter of fact, you're probably growing at a rate that may surprise you, but other people see it, other people experience it, because as you walk with God, it's hard to be the same. And, you know, as the Israelites carried on and everything, and Samuel was doing as God commanded, even though the people around him weren't great, he was evolving in his own gifts. So, you know, when he got back, when, they, when the Israelites ended up getting back their cities, after defeating the Philistines, because the Philistines were following the box and they, they tried to attack, <laughs> you know, after seeing that their soldiers would have died and such. 
um, they got back the land of Garth and Ixtad, Ixtad or something like that. Um, and he also got by the Covenant box, and he would have gotten the five tumors and the five mice, five golden tumors and the five golden mice, right? Um, for him, was that great? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> so, yeah, you'll find that as you evolve, things will improve, and you know, God will just surprise you. That, that's really it, you know. And remember that God is with you. As you grow into your new, your new business, your new body for some, your new connections, new businesses or business ventures, new jobs for others, whatever it is that you're going through, you know, this too shall pass. It's actually one of my favorite songs from Yolanda Adams. I'm not going to try and sing it. My bathroom tells never leave, but I don't think anybody wants that on their eardrums. But just continue working on yourself. Just continue continue to improve yourself, continue most importantly to walk with God and be obedient to him and what he commands you to do. Shed the connections that you need to shed. Um, you know, take things to God at all times. Run all decisions to him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make it straight your path. I believe that's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Trust the good news Bible here. Yes, he's always on duty. Been faithful for the last 20 years. So, not going to retire him just yet. And when I do, I'm just going to change the cover. Still keeping my pages. But that's not my goal. I guess I don't want this video to be too long, so I think we get the idea. But it's yeah, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah, it's actually Proverbs chapter three, verse five to six. So yeah, trust in the Lord with all your heart and meet, and never rely on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you do, and He will show you the right way. So same as what I said before. So it's actually Proverbs chapter three, verses five to six. Right. No, you know, take everything to God, make yourself open to God to use you so he can restore you and trust him and have faith in him so he can do a unique work in you. Now, going back to what I was saying before about butterflies, right? This is something that people actually don't realize. You know, did you know that butterfly wings are actually transparent? Yeah. So what you're seeing is really like light reflecting off of them. That's something that like, a lot of people don't realize. And, you know, it's just amazing how God will create things in nature because you will just see these beautiful butterflies and not realize just how elaborate they really are. Just like how your story is going to be elaborate, right? Because when God restores, you know, he restores things to greater than they were before. He never gives you less than what you had. And he never takes things away to leave them taken away unless you are being, you know, punished. And even then, once you repent and you live right by him, if your heart is open to do so, because, you know, God can harden your heart as well. You know, he'll take care of you. It's not going to look like what you had before, but he'll take care of you. You know, but you have to change. But that's not my point. So now you see the butterfly wings are covered by um like thousands of miniature scales. And you see they reflect light. So when the different light beams hit them, they reflect a different color of light through the scales. And the wings are actually made up of protein called chitin, which is the same protein that forms an insect's exoskeleton. And much like an exoskeleton, chitin is transparent. So there you go. And this information is actually from the suburban exterminating, um, su suburban exterminating .com. So that's something that you need to know. Um, just remember as well, Isaiah 41, verse 18 to 19. And in it, God explains, 
I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, shitaya tree, the, and the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set the desert, the fir tree, and the pine and the box tree together. So with all this being said, you know, we serve a God of restoration, we serve a God of renewal, we serve a God of rejuvenation, we serve a God of redemption. Nothing is impossible for God. God will turn a barren woman into the mother of a prophet. Because again, Samuel's mother was Hannah. I don't know if you remember the story of Hannah and Panina. Hannah was the barren one. And Panina was the one that had all the babies and was teasing Hannah. Hannah was also anorexic. Yet Hannah was the one that was favored by Samuel's father. So whoever God chooses to use, you know, he will use. Look on Sarah. You know, um, Abraham's wife, Sarah. Sarah, or whoever you want to pronounce it, the one that gave birth to Isaac. She was barren. She was like well old when she had Isaac. Mary was a virgin when she had Jesus. So God will do the impossible. Don't you worry about how bad your situation is because even if it seems unlikely to you, it's not unlikely to God. It might hurt. It might hurt. You may not have a lot of friends in the process and that's okay. You might get in some, you might get in some scrapes. I'm not going to lie to you. You will get in some scrapes. But just like a butterfly, you can emerge out of it. And you know, butterflies actually have four wings and not two. Another thing that we didn't even think about, right? So I hope that this leaves you well. So just a closing remark. Stop hanging around caterpillars. Be a butterfly. There are some people that won't change. And the ones that won't change, leave them alone. Because you never know. They may not become butterflies. You don't usually see every caterpillar become a butterfly. I used to go to Holy Childhood. It's an all-girls school in Kingston, um, Jamaica. And... Around March, March, Mish, March, Mish, there would be a whole slew of green caterpillars all over the Tree of Parliament. Because that's where the young ladies would go and chat, aka the Tree of Parliament. So you between that time of year, between March and around Mish, here caterpillar. You don't even want to sit under that tree, you don't want to really have lunch under that tree like that because it's just infested with caterpillars because we, you tend to get a lot of rain around that time. And you often see the caterpillars emerge after a lot of rain. All right? And so when those butterflies come out, listen, they're everywhere. They're in your hair. They're flying all over the place. They're very pretty to watch in the morning, but they're a little annoying. <laughs> so I can also say that for the many, let's say 100 butterflies, there were probably like 200 that died as somebody drove past because they were just in the road trying to crawl to the tree of parliament to get somewhere so that they could get into their little cocoon and transform and such and they didn't make it. Right? So no worries. Um, not everybody can come with you. And if it's lonely, it's lonely for a reason because it's when God restores you and puts you into his rooms those rooms are going to be anointed for your blessings. And not everybody can go into those rooms. All right. So I hope this helps. That's all for me. I am Marcia Bent again from Think Premium JA. And I offer social media marketing, email marketing, blogging, other forms of sales copywriting. I have two online courses. I offer business consultation services. And I have an online store where I sell products that you're likely to need in the next two weeks anyway. Like dental floss, fabric soft, non mouthwash, toothpaste, laundry detergent, um, all-purpose clean up, meal replacement shakes, protein powders, fertilizers, etc. So let me know if you need to learn more. 30% of the proceeds of the sales from my online store, along with 10% of the proceeds from the sale of my digital marketing products, will actually go to the Homestead Place of Safety so I can work with the members of my church home to help these young ladies to have a strong relationship with Christ by restoring their mindset. Now, the ladies in that facility are fairly taken care of by 
um, you know, charitable organizations. But if their mindset is not improved, which many of them are boisterous, some are pregnant, and these are young ladies between ages of eight and eighteen, there isn't really much chance for them out there in society. I really need your help with that. Okay, so visit the comments down below for more information. And of course, the video about that charity will be tabbed as well. So you can click on it to learn more. And of course, if you like the video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Like so I can know that you know you like the video. It gives, a little, gives me a little encouragement. It also encourages the algorithm to push my video as well. Um, subscribe so you can continue to get great videos like this. Share the video with somebody else that may gain value from it. I mean, after all, I would love to reach 800,000 people by the end of this year. And I would love your help with that. And of course, comment down below. Let me know what parts of the video helped you that didn't help you, that you got value from, that you'd like to see me add in the future. I, I would love to know because, again, I'm still learning as I make these videos. And I want to make content that is really helpful for entrepreneurs. My whole goal is to minister about God through business. So definitely would love your help in doing that. Okay. That's it for me. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And remember to never stop dreaming. Bye-bye.